What's going on everybody? I'm Jeff Carpenter with VFlat World and this morning I baked some sourdough bread. So we're gonna use this window behind me and these duo boards from VFlat World to create some natural light food photography. So for those of you who don't know at Duo Boards, they're a relatively new product uh, from VFlat World that are made for product, food, uh, beverage photography. Uh, so basically it's double-sided, hence the name Duo Board, and you've got different patterns that you can have and they come in two different sizes. So right now I'm using the smaller size and that's perfect for a shot that is just a small piece of bread like this. So if I was just to shoot this and it was just the piece of bread, the image might be kind of boring. I know it looks cool with this subway tile backdrop and this butcher block uh, tabletop, but it's nice to add some props if you can sometimes too. So for this shot, I've got some of this uh, prop wheat stock. I'll also add some flour as well so I have something in the foreground uh, just to give the composition a nice flow throughout. Uh, another thing you'll notice, which you probably can't see in this shot, but I've actually got this, um, the duo boards and this whole setup on a cart with wheels because since I'm using natural light and I'm just using this window behind me, I can't move that light. So what I'm gonna have to do is if I'm not liking exactly the way the light's hitting the shot, I can actually move the entire setup, which will just make things a lot easier. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about is the lens I'm using. So I'm using a Panasonic uh, 24 to 105. It's the kit lens that comes with the S1. Uh, and I'm shooting it right around 70 millimeters. And the reason why I'm shooting at 70 is because if I was any wider, let's say I was at 24, it would look really, really uh, distorted and the entire image would look kind of funky. But if I zoomed all the way in to 105, there might be a bit more lens compression than I want. So I found that shooting uh, right around 70 millimeters is, was the perfect focal length for this shot. All right, so to set up this shot, I actually pulled my bread out uh, and I put my wheat stalks where I kind of wanted them. Uh, and the reason I took the bread out is because I'm about to add the flour now and you'll see that I have this strainer in my hand. So rather than me just dumping the flour on there and it probably gets gets everywhere and a little clumpy. Uh, by using this fine strainer, I can kind of control a little bit more where it goes. Uh, and the reason the bread is not there is because if I had it there, then it would leave a nice perfect circle right where the bread was and it would look kind of fake. All right, so I've got everything set up how I want it. I've got the angle of this uh, area, how I want it with the light. I'm kind of backlighting this a little bit. Uh, I also have my camera set up. I have my video light off. That's why I'm so dark. Um, I've got the bread angled how I like it in relation to the camera, and I've got uh, my little pieces of, of wheat in the right spot. And then I took me a little minute, but I, but I finally got the, uh, the flour how I liked it. Uh, just to kind of give it a little bit of a messy look. You know, it's, I wanted it to look like it just came out of the oven, plopped it down on the, on, the, uh, on the butcher block here. So let's go ahead and get shooting, and then I'm gonna show you one little trick to kind of bring the image to life a little bit more. Um, but so right, what I have right now is I've got uh, like I said, I've got my camera at uh, 70 millimeters because that was a good focal length for this shot. I'm not shooting directly into the duo board. I'm kind of at an angle a little bit just so it's not super symmetrical. Um, and I've got my aperture at f4, my ISO at 100. I'm on a tripod uh, so I can bring my shutter speed down a bit. So I've got it at 30. Uh, if I really wanted to, I can actually trigger it from my computer over there so I get no camera shake. But for this, I can just go ahead and, and trigger it from my, uh, from my camera. So let's go ahead and take one shot. So one thing I'm looking at is I've got my histogram on my camera here because I want to make sure since this part with the flower that was actually from when I baked it uh, is closest to the window here, I don't want that to get blown out to, to pure white. So I'm looking at my histogram, making sure that I'm uh, still underexposed. What I can do in post uh, with natural light, you can, as long as you're shooting in raw, you can bring up some of those shadow areas uh, if they are a little bit underexposed. You just want to make sure that you don't, you're not at pure white because then there's no coming back from that. So one thing I'm noticing right away with this shot, in order to you know, keep the exposure correct on the side of the bread closest to the, to the window, uh, this side of the bread is, is falling into darkness quite a bit. So rather than bringing in another light or you know, putting it, turning this at all, what I can do is I've just got this little eight by 10 bifold board. It's just a white piece of foam core uh, from V Flat World. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that here. 
So what that's gonna do is that's gonna take the light from this window here, it's gonna bounce off this white card and fill in this right uh, left-hand side of the bread. So what I wanna do is depending on how much bounce back I want, I can move it closer or further away. And the cool thing about this is when you're shooting with natural light is you're actually able to see a very, very direct representation of how much you're getting. So I don't want too much because I don't want it to be like blah in your face and here's, you know, no shadows. But I just wanted a little bit of fill just to give that side of the frame a little bit, you know, less shadows. Um, and what it does too is it helps light up a little bit of these, this wheat over here too, which has fallen into pretty, pretty dark. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take one with this, take one without it, and then uh, you can really, really see the difference and I'll put them up side by side. So here's the first one with the little uh, reflector. Here's one without. And we can also play with it as far as like, here's really close might be in the shot. Let's get it right out of frame here. So that's about as close as it can be without being in the frame. And then we'll just bring it back a little further and a little further and just a little further and then we'll take it out completely. So that way you can see how the proximity of the reflector really factors into how much light's getting kicked back. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and follow VFlat World, and check them out online at vflatworld.com. If you want to see any of my personal work, check me out on Instagram at ReadyLightMedia. I'm gonna go eat some of this bread, but I'll see you next time.